Apple has just released iOS 16. I'm gonna walk you through more than 100 features, changes, and enhancements in Apple's biggest operating system update yet. Welcome everybody to Apple Insider, it is Andrew here, and as I said, iOS 16 is now available to download. You can download it on your supported device right this second. If you want to know what Apple has improved with this update, then come with me as I walk you through 100 to 150 changes, features, enhancements that Apple has baked in to this massive update. So here are a ton of new features in iOS 16. Our journey with iOS 16 begins on the redesigned lock screen. The lock screen has changed in a multitude of ways. Small ones, such as the fact that the day and date now resides above the time here at the top of the lock screen. But we've also bigger changes, including the fact that notifications are no longer filling the whole screen, but instead come up from the bottom. I'm currently in do not disturb mode while filming, but as I start to pull up, you will see that at the bottom, we have our notifications coming in. So if I was not in do not disturb mode, they'd sit here at the bottom of the screen. Once we go ahead and hold on this lock screen, we can get into the new lock screen editor. There's multiple lock screens that I have set up with a bunch of different designs, but on the far right, we can add a new lock screen. You can have several lock screens active and move between them throughout the day. If I tap on the plus button, there's a new gallery view that's gonna help me find a new wallpaper that I will love. There's a featured section here at the top with a few suggestions to choose from. There are suggested photos. It can pull photos um, from your actual photos app. So family members, pets, uh, landscapes, trips, all sorts of things. It can suggest as photos for your lock screen. You can do a photo shuffle that'll shuffle up your photos throughout the day. Every time you tap on your screen or wake your phone, a new photo will be there. There's weather and astronomy that can show the current weather in your location, as well as several astronomy views that show different views of the Earth, as well as the moon and the solar system as a whole. There are emoji faces. With the emoji faces, you can choose several things, including the uh, background or the pattern of all of the emojis themselves. There's spiral, there's grids, there's rings. And if you tap on the emoji button, the lower left-hand corner, you can choose the emojis that you use. And of course, the more you put an emoji, the more it shows up. So we have three clouds, which is why this is primarily planes with clouds interspersed between. So there's some neat stuff that you can do to add into this. Let's throw in some bell peppers. Cool, puts it right there into that. That pattern. So that is the new emoji lock screen for your iPhone. Apple has several collections to choose from. As you can see here, we have these swoops. Now these also have depth effects. You can see that swirl kind of goes in front of the time right there. Similar with this one. This is a very neat one. Um, a few other collections, the clownfish also has a depth effect going on. You can see the bubble anemones going over top of the time. Now some of these collections also have really cool animations to go with them and I'll get back to those in just a moment. Then finally we have color. There's a bunch of different gradients so you can fully choose and customize the colors for that lock screen. I wanna go into a little bit more detail on some of these. For example, the photo lock screen. You can choose to add a depth effect to these photos if it is available. So if it's like a portrait photo, it's able to put your subject in front of the time and the date, which is really neat looking. You can also control the uh, zoom or the crop on these photos, so you can adjust that by pinching. There are several filters that you can apply to these, so studio, black and white, color backdrop, duo tone, color wash, lots of options to choose from to go over top of those photos. If you tap on the photos icon in that lower left hand corner, it allows you to choose. So there are featured ones that you can choose from. Here are just some of the featured ones that it's recommending, or you can go through and choose what you want. You can filter by people, pet, nature, cities, or just search through, go through your albums, anything like that. For photo shuffle, you have a lot of different options to choose from. You can choose the people, so if I hit choose, I can actually choose people based on the people album of my iPhone, or I can toggle on pets, nature, and cities as well. So I can just go through people, just do pets, or any combination of all of these. For your frequency, you can change it for every time you tap on it, every time you lock it, hourly, or daily. So you can go through all of that, or manually choose photos here at the bottom. Here's the astronomy lock screen, really nice as well. So you have this full far out view of the earth. You can zoom in and get a little bit more detail. Then we can switch to the moon if you'd prefer that. Full shot of the moon or get a little bit closer with the moon detail view or go all the way out for the solar system. This is very similar to the versions of the astronomy face on the Apple Watch. 
As I mentioned, several of these lock screens have cool animations as you go to your home screen. So here it is for these rainbow swirls, this vintage Apple one, the kind of collapse in the background. Here's the astronomy face as the Earth moves towards the bottom of the screen. That's a really cool looking one. This swirling ribbon opens up as you go to your home screen. I love that look as well. When you do add a new lock screen to your phone, you can tap add. It'll offer you this option to set as a pair for both your lock screen and your home screen, or you can customize the home screen. So if I go here, I can choose, I can actually blur out the background. So you have an option to blur the background, choose that color gradient, something different, but you can set that at the same time. It's really nice. So here we have the new lock screen, goes to the background and gives it a nice blur effect on the home screen. And if you want to, you can go ahead and delete any of these lock screens by swiping up and tapping on that trash can icon. When we choose a lock screen to edit, how about this one here? I can tap on customize here at the bottom and I have additional controls. So there are the colors of the screen that I can change from for some of these collections. What I wanna look at is up here. I can tap on the date and the time and I can change the font, the color. There are eight different font choices to pull from. I kinda like this vintage looking one and you can customize a color to match. So each of these has an intensity slider at the bottom to adjust the saturation of it. A bunch of choose from or a full color wheel located on the far right hand side. We can even use a dropper to pull a color off of the image of your background. If we go back, tap outside of that, we can add widgets to these lock screens. So here we have one already added from a calendar, but there's plenty more available. I can add things like a battery widget so you can see connected devices, your calendar, there's some for home, fitness, looking at the full list of Apple ones, battery, calendar, clock, fitness, home, news, reminder stocks, and weather are available. And some of those have different sizes to them. So if we look at home, there are a few different ones to choose from, including whole home views, some on climate, climate sensors, security, security accessories, or lights. So many different accessories have, or many different widgets have different versions to choose from. So if I add a widget in, I can drag it up and place it that way. If I tap out, I'm gonna add another one. Uh, news is too big. Let's do just weather, add the temperature in, perfect, just like that. And those can be moved around. So if I want to move those to the side or move the large one to the side, it won't let me do that. But I can move these small ones back and forth to adjust them that way. So those are the new widgets and these will work with third party apps. As you can see, home widgets is one of the first ones to be updated. I can choose, add this widget in there and customize it from the home app. But third party widgets will be supported here on the updated lock screen. The last thing about the lock screens before we move on is tying in focus modes. You can tie focus modes to lock screens and when you set your lock screen, it'll enable that focus mode. For example, I can choose between do not disturb, sleep, fitness, movie time, driving, personal, work, and additional ones that I can set up inside of the focus settings. I've already done this for a couple of my screens that I have. For example, this screen here, the astronomy screen, is really nice and dark. So I use this at night. So I switch to this screen at night and it automatically puts my phone and my watch and everything else into that sleep focus as it's synced across my devices. I love the ability to tie these lock screens to a sleep or other focus that you have created. There are technically a couple other small enhancements to the lock screen. For example, the now playing widget has been redesigned and has a neat little music visualizer that actually responds to the music located in the right hand corner. And where this music widget is, is also where the new live activities widgets will show up. So if you have something going on like a sports game, you're following the Browns game uh, or Ohio State game or something, you can see a live score going on here. It could also be your Uber arriving or your taxi arriving. It could even be your uh, Grubhub order being delivered, but any live feed, live activity that you're following can show here on your lock screen. And that is a third party API. So tons of third party will be able to build little widgets to show here on your lock screen as well. Apple has improved focus modes drastically with iOS 16. For example, the onboarding experience to create new focus modes is even easier. For example, if I just jump into maybe the gaming focus that it's already optimized or created for me, I can choose to enable the gaming focus and then I can customize it further. I can choose the people, the apps, and more to go along with this focus mode. And if you don't want to choose any of the pre-designed focus modes, you can simply create your own custom mode, give it an icon and walk through all of the steps in creating your own focus modes. Apple has really updated the editing of focus modes. Here you can see how much better the new focus mode screen looks compared to how it was with iOS 15. Apple's added a nice big icon on the top, made it easier to choose people and apps, 
added more options, and added some other enhancements to these focus modes. For example, when we go through here, you can have these customized screens. You could customize your lock screen and your home screen before, but now you can also customize your Apple Watch screen at the same time. When we scroll down, we have these new options for filters. Focus filters work in various apps that allow you to filter out what you're seeing. For calendar, you can only see certain calendars. For messages, you can only talk to certain people. For Safari, it'll filter out to only certain tab groups. You can filter out your inboxes. Maybe I don't see my work inbox after hours. I can also use system filters for things like dark mode and low power mode. These can be built into third-party applications. For example, timelines. I can choose which timelines or timers I actually want to be able to view when I'm in these different focus modes. So really need to see how third-party developers will add to these built-in filters. Finally, for focus modes, Apple has added this new option for focus status. With focus status, you can enable on a per focus basis and it'll apply to third party apps as well. So if I'm in a third party app like Slack, if they added support for this, it would be able to share my status as in driving mode or something like that. So those third party um, apps would know what focus mode you're in and be able to share that. So a lot of chat apps could be really useful in integrating this focus feature. Let's talk about everybody's favorite personal assistant with some new enhancements coming to Siri. Here within settings, you can see a couple new options. For example, automatically sending messages. Messages can be sent without having you having to confirm them before they send. It can really streamline the message sending process. Additionally, while on a phone call, you can enable call hang up, where you can just tell, hang, where you can tell Siri to hang up the phone call or the FaceTime call so you don't have to touch your phone or your HomePod or wherever you're taking that call from really handy if you take a lot of phone calls and use Siri. There are improved offline controls for Siri, so some things will work now without having to require internet access, including more home commands. Apple's also made it easier when using Siri to use shortcuts, so now as soon as you install an app, that shortcut will become available. There's also improvements to being able to know what Siri can do. At any time inside of an application, you can ask Siri what you can do here, and Siri can provide responses that are useful to where you are. For example, let's jump into messages. Since I'm in messages, it's giving me a few different options, including calling my grandfather, making a FaceTime call, or reading my messages. Lastly, any songs identified using Siri will now show inside of the Shazam app history. Let's talk about dictation. Dictation is great in iOS 16. You can still, we still have a microphone icon in that lower right hand corner, but I can also use this microphone icon located right here inside of the text field. And I can now combine text control as well as keyboard control or voice control as well as keyboard control when using dictation. Let's go ahead and try it out. What are you up to today? Let me know. Exclamation point. Talk to you later. You can see how dictation was able to use my voice and the keyboard at the same time. Plus, it now will automatically add punctuation, like question mark, exclamation points, commas, and more. Plus, dictation can now add emoji. Since we're here, we might as well talk about messages. The biggest news here is that you can now unsend and edit messages. For example, if I send this message here to Wes, once it's gone ahead and actually delivered, I can tap and hold on it, and I have new options. I can undo sending that message for two minutes, and I can edit that message. I can edit the message up to five times within 15 minutes. If I go ahead and tap on edit, I can make a modification of that message and tap on the check mark. It's gone ahead and edited it, but that edited icon is now blue and I can tap on it and I can view the previous versions of that message and Wes can too. Let's go ahead and send this message and I'll show you how we can delete them. Again, tap and hold, now hit undo send and poof, that message is gone. The Shared With You API has also been extended to third-party applications, so if Wes sent me a recipe or something like that, and the third-party app supported Shared With You APIs, it could surface that, making it easier for me to find in that application at a later point in time. Memoji have been updated. There's new hairstyles, there are new poses, there's new headwear, noses, lip colors, and so much more to choose from when creating your perfect Memoji. You can choose some of the different styles or the different poses up here at the top, but Apple just made it more inclusive and more impressive than before. Lastly in messages, there's new pause and rewind features when listening to audio messages here inside of the messages app. There is filtering for dual SIM cards, so if they come into different SIM cards, you can filter based on the SIM card, and you can mark an entire thread 
as unread to remind yourself to get back to it later. Let's look at the Photos app. One of the first things I love is the ability to identify the subject of a photo and remove it from the photo itself. For example, here I have a photo of Ricky hanging out on the couch. I can usually tap and hold and pull Ricky right from the frame. I can then go move into a messages chain, or into a document, or heck, here right into notes, and I can paste that image in. Boom, there's Ricky. I just pulled him directly out of that photo, complete with the background and the edges. It is so incredibly detailed. And yeah, that's a bone sitting right there that he's got between his paws. Just looks a little funny when it's so tiny like that. But it doesn't work just in the Photos app. It'll actually really work anywhere. Here I am on Apple Insider reading this review of the new Kishi version 2. I can tap and hold on that. And when I see that pop-up menu, I can scroll and tap on Copy Subject. Now I can do the same thing. I can go into my notes app or into a text chain, go ahead and tap, hit paste, boom. I just copied the Razor Kishi out from the background, moving everything else that was there. It's so cool. If I go back to my conversation with Wes, I can tap, paste, do the same thing, send him that. It'll work with subjects or objects, it'll work with people, it'll work with all sorts of things. So a really neat new feature here for the Photos app inside of iOS 16. Another improvement with Photos is visual lookup. It can now recognize birds, insects, spiders, and statues inside of photos. For example, here we have a picture of a flamingo. If I go ahead and pull up or tap on the eye, I can hit look up bird. It'll see that's a bird in the photo and pull up additional information, including that's a flamingo. It'll pull up similar web images, or I can tap into this knowledge and learn more about flamingos and jump directly into Wikipedia. Really helpful for identifying different types of birds, insects, spiders, and even more than before. On the memories page, there's a couple improvements. First, memories will not surface for sensitive locations, things like the Holocaust Museum. It's not going to show as a suggested memory here inside of photos. There's also more accurate and more memories that will show on things like the memories widget or the photos widget on your home screen. And there are new memory types. Examples are children playing and this day in history. Still inside of photos, there's a new duplicates option. It'll automatically identify duplicate photos inside of the photos app to help you reduce clutter inside of the Photos app. The hidden and recently deleted albums can now be protected either password or through Face ID slash Touch ID. It's another way to protect your recent deleted or your hidden albums. The People album on your iPhone can be filtered now. If I tap on this, I can sort by name alphabetically or for a custom order. When editing a photo, you can apply various edits and then you can copy those edits and apply them to additional photos. So if you took this similar photo, you wanna apply those same edits to it, move over, again, go tapping into edit, and you can paste the edits that you just copied right here from the top and apply those same changes to a second or group of photos. By the way, as you make a bunch of edits with the photos, you can now undo and redo multiple edits so you have this full version history up there at the top. When shooting here in the camera and using portrait mode, there now is foreground blur. So things in the foreground will be blurred out, making the photos have even more depth to them while that subject and the background remain in focus. Cinematic mode has also just been overall improved compared to how it was when it launched on the iPhone 13 Pro series. Photos also now supports shared libraries. This won't be arriving in the initial version of iOS 16. It'll probably come alongside iPadOS 16.1 and iOS 16.1, but you can add photos directly from the camera roll to the shared library they can share with multiple people. You can create automation rules that will automatically share photos that are taken in a certain location or that contain certain people and even based on Bluetooth proximity. So you're next to a person and you take some photos because it knows you're next to your wife or whoever it is, it'll know that you have a shared photo album with them and add those albums or those photos to that album. It's really handy. You can go ahead and tap on the ellipsis in the top corner to switch between your own personal album, the shared album, and there's an icon directly in the camera to shoot directly into your personal or shared album. With iOS 16, the Home app has been completely redesigned. Apple has also changed it from HomeKit to Apple Home. So you'll start to see several accessories launching that say compatible with Apple Home versus compatible with HomeKit. Just a small name change because HomeKit was always more of a developer API and not an actual marketing name, but it kind of got wishy-washy there for a little while. So here's the redesigned Home app. You can see we have these little pills at the top that allow you to filter your accessories. 
everything has been combined in this one main view. So that's my whole home view. I can see my scenes, different rooms, all from this one single screen. I have this revolving camera feed right here, which shows a grid of different camera views, and I can swipe through to choose which cameras I actually want to view. Tapping any of them brings them full screen. If I do use these pills here at the top, I can filter. So tapping on climate will filter down to things like my scenes or automations or devices that are based on climate. So in this case, it has shades, has heaters, has blinds, humidifiers, the AC and the heat in the house, all sorts of things that are based around climate. I could also filter based on lights. I have security is also an option, door locks, all of that, security alarms, garage doors, all of that can show. We have TV and speakers. They'll show you any TVs or speakers that are currently playing in your house that show AirPlay or work with HomeKit and any water ones. So all my gardening ones, if you have a shower or a faucet that's compatible with HomeKit, that will show here under that water filter as well. I can choose to show or hide any accessories or scenes here on this special home view of everything. Several of these pills have been redesigned. They have different colors, such as the door locks are green. You can see all the light ones are yellow, so they can be different colors based on the type of accessory they are. Several accessories have new icons to go with them. So there are new icons for lights. There are also new icons for window coverings, plugs, purifiers, and humidifiers. Apple has added several new wallpaper options for the home app. So you can see we have basic gradients here that have been around and there's new ones such as this field, some flowers, or this just generic white wall. When it becomes available, Apple Home will support Matter when that launches this fall. There's a new architecture for HomeKit that'll make it faster and more reliable, especially if you're controlling multiple accessories here from the Home app. I tried to toggle on a bunch of lights at once. They would show the response here in the Home app faster, as well as more reliably communicate with those individual accessories. And of course, as I had already kind of mentioned, there are new long screen widgets that support HomeKit. Moving along to the Mail app, don't you judge me over my unread email accounts. There are new alerts when sending messages. So if I go to send this message now and I tap on send, it's gonna alert me that I didn't have a subject. So I can hit cancel. Now I can go ahead and add one. So I can say just document, perfect. Now if I go to send it again, it'll give me another alert. Send anyway, did you mean to add an attachment? I'm referencing something, but didn't actually attach anything. You can send anyway or hit cancel and remember to add that attachment. When I am going to send, I can tap and hold and I have new options to send at a later point in time. So I can send now, send at 9 p.m. tonight, 8 a.m. tomorrow, or just later. And if I tap on later, I have this new view where I can choose a specific date and time to send this message. Now when I do want to attach something like a link, there's a new rich preview. So I can go ahead and tap and hit paste. It looks pretty similar to before, but once it refreshes, you can see I have this really nice preview that shows an image and a link to the article, all of that. It's pretty cool. I love this new image preview and these rich links here inside of Mail. Say you just got this exciting email in from Bath & Body Works. I really want to remember to check that out later. So now if I tap on more, this menu appears. And if I look on the menu, I have a new option to remind me. I can tap on this, and now I can remind myself in an hour, tonight, tomorrow, or just at a specified later point in time. This is really handy to be able to check in on something. So if somebody sends you something and you need to remember to follow up, this is an awesome way to get re-alerted of that email to follow up at a later point in time. Finally, search is much better in the new version of Mail. There's all sorts of improvements to it, such as faster and more reliable options that are returned to you. There are suggestions and fuzzy searches based on what you're typing. It could be the subject, in the mail, anything like that. Just overall, huge, huge, huge improvements to search inside of mail. Inside of the news app, now there's new options for sports. You can here see my sports. These are all different sports teams that I follow. So things like the Columbus Blue Jackets, Ohio State Buckeyes, the Browns, Cleveland uh, Baseball, all sorts of stuff will be in here. There's new highlights that I can find, suggestions for articles to read, all sorts of stuff combined into this just news tab. I even have scores and schedules here at the top, making it easy to see what's going on. I can manage any teams. It's really cool. If you're a big sports fan, this will be a really nice addition to this news app here in iOS 16. Apple's also added things like favorites. So I can see more of these favorites here towards the top. So it's really easy to access your favorites and jump into them right from the main view of the news tab. Lastly, there's just overall better navigation for topic feeds here in news. In Maps, it now supports full multi-stop routing. You can add up to 15 stops in a single route. In Maps, it now supports full multi-stop routing. I can add up to 15 stops 
in one single navigation session. It's really easy to do. Here you can see we have a basic route going on, just Polaris Fashion Place to Fox in the Snow. Then I want to add a second location. Then I want to add a third location, such as Easton. I can go ahead and add this Apple Store Easton Town Center there, and boom, it adds it into the route. It's 15 minutes from stop one to stop two, then another 15 minutes from stop two to stop three. And I can change the order of these, maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe it's a little bit easier to go to Fashion Place to Easton, and then head over to Fox in the Snow. Hey, I shaved a little bit of time out of the whole route. And you can see we have options down here towards the bottom, such as how many stops I have. I can sort these based on the date and time to get more information on that route. And I can even opt to avoid tolls and highways just like I could before. By the way, Maps also now supports having transit cards directly inside of the Maps app where you can see the balance on them and add balance. And you can see transit fares. Those are supported in San Francisco, London, New York, and San Diego. Let's talk about CarPlay. CarPlay has new wallpapers available, just like with every iOS major update. It also supports those multi-stop wraps that I just talked about. It has two new app types available for CarPlay. You can choose from fueling apps, which can help you find fuel or pay for fuel directly from your car, or driving task apps, such as finding road information, toll info, or having towing issues. The podcast library has been updated so you have more access to more of your podcasts. It's much easier to find what you're looking for than having to move over to your iPhone. But the biggest news is that there's that full redesign coming in the future. It can make use of all the screens in your car, center, primary, and the instrument cluster. It includes new widgets for calendar, time, weather, and home as just a few examples. You'll be able to control your car system such as AC, heat, vented seats, heated steering wheel, and more. The instrument cluster is entirely customizable with different layouts, themes, and colors. Nearly 15 manufacturers have signed on, including Ford, Honda, Acura, Land Rover, Volvo, Nissan, and more. Models will be announced as soon as late 2023. The Health app now makes it easy to track all of your medications in a variety of different ways. First, you can get alerts every day about to take your medications. So here, make sure I'm taking my omeprazole and my vitamin D and I can log those directly from my iPhone or from my Apple Watch through smart notifications. And I can see when I've logged my medications here along the top. You can view each medication and see when you've taken it, what the frequency is over periods of time. You can see when your schedule is, how much to take, and when it is, and you can go ahead and manually log it. And here's a highlight of what you've actually done with that medication. You can control the detail, details, like what it looks like and what it is, and here's about a about a section from that medication. I can go into side effects and see everything else about it. And you have drug interactions. If I go back a screen, I can see my highlighted drug interactions here. And it's found none with any of my medications. When I tap in, I can also add interaction factors. I can use alcohol, cannabis, or tobacco with these and it'll alert me if there's any problems with any of the medications that I'm currently taking. For me, I just keep that alcohol one on. I can see all those interactions down below of whether they interact with my factors listed above or any of the med medications that I'm actively taking. You can add a new medication by searching the name here inside of the health app, or you can use the camera to scan the label of the medication. Once I choose something, whether from scanning the label of the pill bottle or here in the app itself, I can choose extended release tablets. I also have other options, creams, drops, foam, gels, whatever it happens to be. Go ahead and hit next. I can choose the strength of those pills. Maybe it's 27 milligrams. I can tell whenever I take this, so frequency every day at a time each day. Maybe I want to do this every uh, afternoon. Perfect. If you have multiple day, you can track that as well. I can choose the pill shape. It definitely looks like that. That's a cream. There's liquids, um, but just a standard tablet, I guess, in this case. I can choose that. I can choose the color of what it actually is in the background below uh, the actual image. Go to the next one, I can see a summary of everything that I'm doing and I can hit done. Now it notice there's a new drug interaction because you should not take oxycodone alongside of alcohol. So if I can go ahead and remove that one, archive it for in the future, if it's just a temporary medication, you can re-add it again or never worry about it again. There's new health sharing features. These are very private and secure right from the beginning, but it can be very helpful for family members, kids, older adults, anyone that you want to help monitor how they're doing. That person will have full control over what is shared, but they'll also be able to see that information. So it's really helpful to see what is going on in somebody's health, health when you are helping take care of them. There'll be a dashboard and notifications and everything again is very private and secure. 
For women, cycle tracking has now been updated. There's now irregular, infrequent, or prolonged cycle alerts that can appear after quite a bit of data has been added to the health app. They'll monitor your information that you've added and alert you if there is any irregularities with your cycle. Of course, again, everything is stored and encrypted locally on your phone, never shared with Apple, and nobody else has access to it. Inside of Safari, there's now support for shared tab groups. You can also customize tab group starting pages with backgrounds and other information. It supports translation through multiple languages now, including Turkish, Thai, Vietnamese, Polish, Indonesian, and Dutch. Safari now supports passkey as a replacement for passwords, though they do take some building out from developers to start using, but they will sync between iCloud and all of your devices. So once you start using passkeys instead of passwords, it's kind of tied to your device and your identity versus individual passwords for all your different websites. Other improvements to Safari include push notifications through Safari, web push notifications, which are coming at a laser later date, settings you made for specific websites, like maybe you're using Zoom, those will automatically sync across all of your devices now, and when you're creating a password for a website, you can now control exactly the recommendations. So if a site is requiring a certain number of characters or a certain um, yeah, length or something, and the suggested password does not meet that, you can now edit those passwords to make it actually meet the site's requirements. Here we are in the wallet application. One of the first new additions, as you can see up here, is package tracking. So any orders that you have made using Apple Pay and are supported by the vendor can show here inside of the wallet app. You can track them as they're being processed, ship out, tracking information, all of that can show right here inside of the wallet application. Super handy, cannot wait for sites to start adopting this. Unfortunately, Ohio doesn't yet support driver's licenses, and only Arizona and Maryland are actually listed as supporting digital driver's license or state IDs here inside of the wallet app. But Apple is really pushing to make these a thing. Apple made new announcements of where these will be accepted, but as far as iOS 16 is concerned, applications will now start to be able to verify your information from your ID. So if you added your ID here into the wallet app and you wanna go purchase alcohol, that app would then be able to securely access just your age to verify your age before making that purchase. Or if you have to verify your identity, they can request that information and only a very limited amount of information can be shared, but it can be used to verify identity, ages, birth dates, anything like that um, in a very secure way. So it's really neat that apps will be able to support verifying this information through your digital ID. Apple is making it easier to add to your Apple account balance directly from Wallet. The Apple Cash Card has been redesigned a bit here in the Wallet application. It's a lot easier to use, send and request money, all of that. If I tap on the ellipsis in the top right hand corner, there's a bunch of quick controls for adding money, transferring your bank account, getting your card number to enter manually, card details, or controlling notifications. You'll even get alerts for outstanding Apple Pay cash requests. There's also a handy little updated daily cash hub for Apple Card users that give you the best ways to increase your Apple daily cash. If you've added any keys to the wallet application, it is now easier to share them directly from wallet or through apps like Messages. And for hotel users, you don't need to have a bunch of keys for all the same hotel. You can now have these multi-stay hotel keys where they'll work for all of your reservations through one chain of hotels. The last couple benefits include making it easier to migrate keys to a new device. When you're adding them, just like if you're adding an old card, it would make it easy to pull up previous cards or previous keys that you had shared with you. And there's new quick access menus for access to back of card features with just a single tap. In reminders, you can swipe left on any actual reminder item and flag that item for later. There's also now built-in collaboration using the share sheet located on the top of a reminder. I can invite others to join me in collaborating on this reminders list and even add it to a group thread where I can see activity feeds right in there inside of that messages thread. Besides the collaboration, I can tap on the ellipses in that top right hand corner where I can also go down and save this as a template for future use. This can be really helpful for things like packing lists that you do repeatedly and you kind of start from the same spot. That's just one example of how reminders can be used as a template. Finally, the whole reminders as a whole can be pinned to the top of the reminders app. Inside of Notes, you can see they are now grouped by date. So you can see the ones that happened today, the ones that were edited yesterday, and those within the last seven days. 
Scrolling down further, there are those in the last 30 days. So it's really nice to be able to sort these based on when they were last edited. When you go to encrypt a note, you can now do so just by using your device's password. You do not have to actually set a actual password for the note itself. You can just use whatever password or authentication you used to get into your phone. So your iPhone's passcode, face ID, or touch ID. New inside of iOS 16 is support for Quick Note here on iPhone. You can do it right here, access it from the folder inside of the Notes app or from Control Center. I can go ahead and tap this, create a new Quick Note, it'll be added there and sync to all of my devices. Oh, Notes also supports filtering by any or all with smart folders or tags. For this feature, we're gonna jump back into the Photos application. Live text has been updated. Now live text can track flights, shipments, translate languages, convert currencies, and more from photos and videos. So here we have just a sign that's in Spanish. I can tap on this. It's able to identify the text and I can hit translate. It'll automatically translate that for me. This is just a custom sign I found online that apparently says, please uh, put your text here. So that's really neat to be able to see. And here I have a video. You can see the camera's moving around. But if I go ahead and pause it right there, if I tap on a frame of text, I should be able to highlight, yes, I was able to highlight and capture the text. I can copy it, move back into messages, and paste Marshall that was copied directly from that speaker. Then we have family sharing. There's this new handy family checklist that makes sure you have everything up to date between all your family, what you need to turn on and not turn on. You can use Quick Start for setting up child devices, which makes it really easy to automatically set things up with recommendations based on the age of that kid. It also makes it a whole lot faster to actually do. And screen time requests can come through on messages, making it easier to see and approve those requests. There's also improvements in iOS 16 for AirPods user. Of course, it supports the new second generation version of AirPods Pro. There's new counterfeit detection. So if you would try to pair a fake set of AirPods or AirPods Pro with your iPhone, you'll see an alert pop up on screen. While those AirPods Pro are real, I did have a fake pair nearby. And when I tried to set it up, this is the alert that appeared on screen. Basically said they cannot verify these AirPods and they could be fake and not behave as you expect them to. You can go ahead and disconnect or move over to Bluetooth settings to set them up that way. When AirPods are open nearby, new shortcuts will appear inside of the settings app. Before you have to jump into Bluetooth, then tap on the headphones, now I can just choose Android AirPods Pro or AirPods Mac directly from this main menu of settings and get into all that information. Finally, there is the new personalized spatial audio where you use the camera on your phone to scan your actual ears to create a personalized sound profile that improves the quality of spatial audio. Safety check is a new privacy and security feature located inside of settings for people who are experiencing domestic violence. You can learn more directly from here and Apple will explain how this can help you protect all of your information. Emergency reset will reset across people and apps and disable location sharing and privacy permissions. Plus you're able to always review and customize who has access to exactly what on your devices. So I can manage sharing and emergency reset everything I need to to revoke access for other people to see what I'm doing and individual apps. Lockdown mode is also new. Most people won't need this, but for anyone who is very particular about their privacy and wants to make sure their device and their information is protected as possible, you can enable lockdown mode. You will lose some features and functionality, but it will be the most secure way to use your iPhone. Combined with watchOS 9, you'll be able to mirror your Apple Watch to your iPhone and even interact with it. It can be useful as an accessibility feature or to give some tutorials on what to do to use their Apple Watch. Apple Fitness will soon be available to everybody. And I'm talking about the fitness app, not the actual Apple Fitness subscription service. You can use this even if you don't have an Apple Watch. It'll use the sensors inside the iPhone to approximate your calorie spend and attribute them towards your rings for the day. FaceTime handoff will allow you to move calls automatically between iPhone, iPad, and Mac. Inside of the Translate app, you'll now be able to open the camera and translate just using the camera without having to use the microphone or typing anything in. Spotlight search on your phone has moved from the top of the screen down here towards the bottom, making it easier to see what you're doing and address and change anything that's in the typing field. iCloud Plus will now support custom domain names and you'll be able to use hide my email in third party apps. When using the keyboard, you can now enable haptic feedback. So as you're typing, it'll feel like you're clicking an actual keyboard on the screen.
Weather now has severe weather notifications that will alert you for impending severe weather in your area. Face ID now works in landscape mode. And finally, I can't show this yet either, but Apple will be launching the Freeform app on iPhone, iPad, and Mac later this year. I don't know about you guys, I'm a little exhausted. <laughs> that was a lot of stuff to cover, and I appreciate the few of you that hung out with me here to the end. Thank you very much. Check out my other videos on watchOS 9, the other updates, and stay tuned because I'll have similar videos for iPadOS 16 and macOS coming out very soon. Otherwise, I'll catch you guys in the next video.